Welcome back to Two Squared Gaming. This is Pima Gora, and I am in home. Uh, this is episode three now, I believe. Ooh, there's a lot of doors for me to go through. I don't like having these fucking choices to make, man. Okay, I'm gonna go to the first door. I'm just gonna work work my way through, I guess. Um, I just found Norman. He dead. It's locked. This wasn't the right gate. It was locked tight. It wasn't my house. This isn't your house. This one is the one. It's the third one. Um. The gate was locked tight. This wasn't my house. It's just, ooh, what's this? The neighborhood's local post box. A letter sticking out as if someone hadn't pushed all the way in. I knew it wasn't right, but did I look at the letter? Yeah, of course I do. The envelope was addressed to Norman. There's no return address, but the handwriting looked familiar. I took a deep breath and tore open the package. Norman, I'm sending this to you in a letter because I'm afraid to tell you in person. What we did, well, it was wrong. My husband isn't an easy man to be with, but he's my husband and your friend. I need some time to sort this out, away from you both. I'm going away for a while. I'm going to tell him. Norman, so don't you think you can hold that against me? Maybe we'll work it out. I'm not even sure he'll want to, but he deserves at least that much. Goodbye. Rachel. I had the wrong gate. This one was locked. It's probably that one. I want to see if there's anything down here. Nope. Trash. Can't get in the trash. Can't get in the trash. I did turn our backyard. The rain gave me a terrible sense of foreboding, and it chilled me through my clothes. I was expectant, but also afraid. I held my breath as I approached my our back door. I was terrified to step inside. <laughs> Bang! Rachel kills me. No, the house is painfully quiet. The only sound was my own breathing, ragged and strained. I flickered the light switch by the door. The power was off. I remember having breakfast here on this very table. Was that yesterday or sometime before? I love that the ominous shit happening. Okay, so we got door. That. Uh, something on the ground. There's a small pile of mail on the floor in front of the mail slot. How many have been away? Why hadn't Rachel picked this up? Most of the contents are bills. There's a credit card bill there. Did I open it? I ripped the bill open and read it. To my surprise, it said something about canceling my credit card due to non-payment. What the hell? The front door was locked from inside. I couldn't go out, though I needed to see if Rachel was here. Okay, so I'm going to go in this door and then head upstairs. Door of the basement. It was locked. Where did I put the damned key? Okay, so we're upstairs now. Whoop! Door was stuck shut. There's an old-fashioned keyhole underneath the handle. Alright, so... I gotta find this key. Here we go. Open door. I found the last missing piece from my wallet. The old photo of Rachel and I stared back at me, reminding me of better times. It didn't make me feel terribly comfortable. Did I keep it anyway? Yeah. I placed the photo on my wallet, feeling like I got a part of my life back. Still, the image made me uneasy. Why did I throw it away? Our television. I had purchased it before I knew I was going to lose my job. I felt pretty guilty about it afterward, but by then it was too late. Huh. I'm like trying to tie everything up. You know, did Rachel kill Norman? Did I kill Norman? Did I have an episode? Let's see what's over here. Our hallway mirror had been smashed. It's pieces scattered around the floor. Oh, oh. Bathroom. Our sink, which needed to be replaced. One of the taps always stuck, but I hadn't gotten around to fixing it yet. We were lucky enough to get a house with one of those wonderful old claw-footed bathtubs. Okay. My laptop had been left on, and only had a tiny bit of power left. On the screen is a website about the old water tower. There's a key in the top drawer of my desk. Did I take it? I pocketed that key. The laptop was warm and had been running for a while. If he doesn't know how long he's been gone and his laptop is still on, that's a hell of a fucking battery. Just from recording, I had to plug in my computer, because I run off a laptop. Okay, what do we got? Books! Books that were half mine, half Rachel's. Hey, now that I look more closely, it looked like the man in the house had some of the same books as I did. My what? Rachel's suitcase was sitting on the bed. It was closed, but I had a feeling it was in it. Did I open it? Rachel's suitcase and 
contain clothes, toiletries, and a train ticket. Is this what you're going to do with Norman? Rachel, why? Were you really going to run away with Norman? Was I really such a monster? Maybe. Okay. Now that I have a key... Um, is it this door? Door stuck shut. There's no fashion keyhole underneath the handle. So I gotta go to the basement now. Unlock the basement door. I just love the animations in this game. There are very old Christmas decorations in the box. The garbage bags were stuffed with old man gas supplies. There's a dirty old key here. Do I take it? Yeah, I do. Took a small key and tried to remember what I unlocked. Upstairs, you fool. Old clothes, tools, and other things we obviously haven't thrown out yet. I put this divider wall up last summer so we create a separate room in the basement. I hadn't finished it yet, so the door was stuck and the drywall was poorly installed. I might not be able to break through if I found something heavy enough. Okay, so I need to go in. Go open the other room. Why you gotta give me the run around? Grab me key I'd found in the basement and unlock the door. Looks like the room had been tossed around. The furniture was a mess. Did somebody break in here? Nay. There's an old crowbar on the floor. Do I need to take the crowbar? Yeah, because I gotta go downstairs. Fuck. Appreciated its weight. That's. Ah, uh, wow. You know what? You're making me run around. It's fine. I'm not that upset about it. I'm not that upset about it. No, I'm fine. Hmm. Did I break through the wall with the crowbar? Yeah. With a heave, I swung the crowbar at the wall. Smashed a hole large enough to step through. As I stepped through the broken wall, my breath caught in my throat. This was it. Was Rachel down there? Was she okay? Don't look. Don't look. There's blood everywhere. The UFO thing. A filthy looking pile of rags had been dumped in the corner. The stench of them was awful and made my eyes water. I was terrified to even touch the pile to see what lay within, but I knew I had to. I had to come this far. After all the searching, after all I had seen, when I looked at the rags, did I finally find my Rachel? Yes. I, oh no, oh no, my hands trembled back as I pulled back on the layers of the cloth. There at the center, under all the dirt and mess, was my beloved, my Rachel. Her arms were bruised all over and slashed repeatedly. Her clothes ripped and torn. Even through all that sickening blood, it was obvious she had been stabbed to death. The knife I had carried all this way seemed like a poison. What had happened to you, Rachel? Who did this to you? I thought about all I had seen and wondered if any of it could help me figure out who had done this. And when I couldn't stay there any longer, I stepped away on shaky legs and made my way back upstairs. Reluctantly, exhausted from my journey, I could no longer resist the urge to close my eyes. These animations are so cool. Maybe I have to use some of Rachel's travel books and find some place to go. It's my wallet with its contents intact. Either I dropped that stuff or somebody else did. Maybe I was sleepwalking again, or maybe somebody stole it from me. Norman's store, that forest, the water tower, was I all those places before? Yeah. I didn't see how it could have happened any other way. I must have been the one to lose my wallet and its contents. But what does that mean? Mm. Within the few broken pieces that remained of the mirror, I could see my face had grown pale and weak. I couldn't bear to look again. It was like I didn't actually expect a reflection. I felt empty and drained. The reflection of that grimy glass is only a shadow, uh, a whisper. I still love the old time charm of that tub, even though it seemed like cold comfort then. It's the keycard I found in the factory, the one that allowed me to slip through that door. It seemed to me that it was probably Norman's, but if that was true, what was he doing back at the plant? Did I think Norman was going to go back to the factory? It must have been him, it must have been using the old locker room. The laptop has finally run out of power. Can I just plug it back? Can I take the keycard? I made up my mind. Oh, yep. So clearly there's, there's power in choosing. I'm just I'm kind of following the yes track in the story to see what happens. I 
My old office safe sat on the floor. I used to keep tax records and other important documents in it. I used a digital passcode, but I didn't have the code. My bed left it somewhere. I leafed through the notebook I had taken from the forest. In it were the names that had been written down. Heather, Olivia, Ashley, Cheryl, Iris, Daphne, Holly, Rose, Rachel. Those poor girls, were they the victims of the same person who had killed Rachel? I wonder what happened to the other names on the list or the ones that scratched out on the desk in those wet tunnels. Passcode for my safe is somewhere in this house. <laughs> Hmm. It was the letter I had taken from the post box. Rachel, were you really having an affair with Norman? But why? I didn't think things were that bad. In the letter, Rachel seemed concerned. She seemed almost worried of what Norman might do. Did, did he do that to Rachel? Yes. I was sure of it. She wanted to end their affair, and that bastard, he, he killed her for it. A lot of it made sense. Norman was clearly seeing Rachel a lot, and so he had plenty of time to plan it out. He knew where we lived, obviously. So Rachel looked so scared when I came home that day. What had happened to me? Did Norman knock me out or something? I still had no idea what was on that tape I found in the garbage. If only I found a way to watch it. From now on, I'd have no one to get angry with me for stupid things like buying this TV. Mm. Okay, let's go downstairs, see if I find a passcode, maybe. It seemed like I had seen all there was. Maybe I thought I was ready to go back into the basement. The mail still sat there, heaped on the floor. Double check just in case. I mean, no more dinners here. No more chit chat over breakfast, at least not for us. Hmm, no passcode, okay. Ooh. <coughs> that was a good sneeze. Mm -mm -mm. Middle of a recording. <laughs> I just don't. This passcode eludes me. If I was guilty, I could take this to a warm, safe place to do something about it. To pick up the knife? Yes. I took the knife and kept it firmly in my hand. I need to put an end to this situation one way or the other. Well, okay, I don't know how to do that then. How to? Can I go out the front door yet? I knew I needed to escape that nightmare, but what about the knife I still carried? I wonder, even if I left, would it really be over? So I leave that house forever? Yeah, I guess. I don't have the passcode, and I couldn't find it. Living this town hadn't been easy. The plan had helped in some way to stay grounded. It kept me in line, gave me something to do, and helped me get away from my past. When the factory closed, everything changed. I guess that was when I started sleepwalking, disappearing for hours at a time. I had MRIs and piles of doctor's reports. Nothing seemed to help, not even drinking. But I swear I'd try to give it up. I know it. The sleepwalking never really went away, though. But I know Rachel had tried. I know she had tried to be there for me even when everything was falling apart. This night did unearth terrible truths, but I knew it was a final act of a long-standing horror I had been living. Waking up in that house tonight was the final cruelty. I should have remained unconscious in that room forever. Even the man I had found in that old place was a mystery. Why was he dead, or who had done it to him? It was not something I could even begin to understand. Or why, for that matter, I was in that damn room in the first place. Now that I thought of it, those sewers were a terrible mystery. What had happened there? I was lucky my way to even find my way out of there. But I never did find out what was on that tape that I now kept. What might it have shown me? I had found the contents of my wallet scattered throughout town. Why the hell had I been out there? Had my sleepwalking gone to some new extreme? I thought that I couldn't account for my whereabouts, but I knew I had been to that forest, and even Norman's place. It was terrifying. I didn't know what that meant, but at least I had recovered my things. Hopefully I thought that would cover my tracks, so I wouldn't be blamed for all this. Even more troubling were those poor girls I'd found in those terrible woods. Half hidden in a shallow grave, their secret death seemed like the ultimate defiling. If I hadn't found them, would anyone have done so? Would they have even been missed? I vaguely recalled the desk I'd seen in those tunnels. The names etched there. Someone had killed those girls. Was it that man? It was clear, at least, that Norman had been going back to the old plant. Maybe he was the one who had boarded up that locker room, who had been drinking up there in that secret hiding place. So had he killed that guard, then? He must have. Maybe he was found out or the guard caught him on patrol. <laughs> Damn it, Norman. Why? After the factory, I thought I might find some solace if I could just get to Norman's store. But all I had found were more horrors and more questions. Now that I really consider it, that's when I should have seen it coming. Norman, you were dead, and it was damn hard to feel bad about that. It was clear you and Rachel were more than just friends, but obviously whatever had been going on had gone badly. So why did you kill her? Did she want out of whatever you two were getting into? 
Were you responsible for the other murders and that those horrible, horrible, uh, other horrible things that had gone in that town? <laughs> I'd find no peace, that much was certain. But this way, I didn't have to look you in the eye or sit through some kind of trial and wonder what was going on in your head. I marched through the rain towards home. I desperately clung onto the hope that this would end. And I guess in a way it did, but how could I have known how hopeless it was? I'd started to feel as disoriented as when I sleepwalked, to think of it now. When I entered from the backyard, I knew something was wrong. I could feel it. No sounds, no movement. It was just like the entire house had been holding its breath, waiting for me. But Rachel, oh, Rachel. No one could have prepared her for that. Norman, I'll never forgive you for what you've done. Your death is no comfort. I only wish it could have been me who made you breathe your last. For whatever reasons you had, I could have f never fathomed that this would be the end. My Rachel was dead. She was gone. And soon, too, I would be. As I swung open the door and stepped out the air, I caught the scent of wet grass and fog. Rachel, my beautiful wife, I just the thought of her again, cold and inert, shook me from head to toe. What would I do now? Who could I turn to? It would be a matter of time before the police got involved before the neighbors knew. The front lawn was soft and given beneath my feet. I couldn't shake the urge that I shouldn't stand there, but rather I should run. Slipping away. Cool. So, obviously, there's other stuff to be done in here. I, I might go back in my own time and, and play through and get some of that other stuff. Um, I clearly missed things, didn't do all of the things. Um, but the way the ending that I formulated basically put Norman at fault. Recognizing that it's probably my alcoholism um, that was the problem within this game. And she clung to Norman. Rachel clung to Norman in that sense. Um, while still also feasibly maybe even loving me. Uh, so it seemed like there was a lot happening in that game. It was a really great game. Um, and obviously three episodes knocked it out in about an hour-ish. Um, there's a continue though. So that's interesting. Let's see what this looks like. Oh, I'm just back in the house. Okay, that's it. Just back in the house. Key card I found, blah, blah, blah. Hmm. I wonder if I... I'm going to see if I can go back out the front door. I'm going to click no. Somebody else is going to use that locker room. But who? How interesting. Okay, I'm not going to go through... through maybe I'm... Yeah, I'm uh, let's, see what, let's see what happens if I try to go through the front door. I just... I got to know. That's it. Just got to know. Is that not the front door? Oh, it wasn't the front door. That's that room. Okay. That's that tape. There we go. Duh. Now. All that. Is it going to be the same thing? Couldn't leave. Not until I thought about this some more. I needed answers. Huh. Couldn't go back down. Not until I gone over everything. Need to make sure I was perfectly clear. So it looks like you can twist some of the things uh, back toward old office safe, digital passcode lock, I didn't have the code, maybe I left it somewhere, notebook, the names, yeah. So it looks like you can, you can shift some of these things um, and at least play back through the house part. I'd love to go back to the factory and do all of that, but I'm not going to do that in other ep in other episodes so i think we're gonna we're gonna cut home here um it was if i remember i bought this for very cheap it was only a couple bucks on sale and i think it's even um it's still pretty cheap relatively all of the time i highly recommend it it was a lot of fun um we'll never actually know what happened i think i'm assuming there i hit my microphone i assume there are multiple endings through this and so uh that's cool but um and I don't need to play through all of them currently. So this has been P. Magora, and I'll see you in whatever I play next. Bye-bye.